we know this is supposed to be hand sized rock. So we are making it that way. This guy rolled it from back over here in our rock pile all the way over to here. And now we have to get it up over the back side of the berm around this rock. So Jack, get to work. Is that on an aqua basin? Yes, it is. Where'd you learn this one, Steven? Oh, got your glasses on yeah, this time. Know, oh, a definitely today. a student. <laughs> yes. No ponytail holder. No. Yeah, no, I still gotta, still gotta work on that. Yeah. Okay, so it might be hard to hear us. We are still in a warehouse. The guys have to continue working, but so do we. So I just wanted to take a second. We've got two of our rocks in that are building a waterfall. Now you can see we have the liner folded back over the top of these rocks. Here's where that fabric comes into play. That's the corner of the aqua basin right there where Jack's hand is. The reason for this fabric is as we backfill, because we need to bring soil all the way up to here and drag it from our berm back down, this will prevent that soil from getting back into the aqua basin on any spot that is not covered by liner and rock. So I hope that makes more sense. Once you see the finished product, you'll understand how we had to backfill. We had to bring soil in all along the backside through here. So let's start moving soil, but I just wanted to point out that that's where that underlayment comes into play and is used. So just a quick progress update. We are getting there. We've got two, four, six rocks. Jack is getting ready to roll the seventh one in. And we know this is supposed to be hand-sized rock. So we are making it that way. I know this rock looks a little bit big to maybe some of you. It might be unapproachable or unattainable, but this guy rolled it from back over here in our rock pile all the way over to here. And now we have to get it up over the backside of the berm around this rock instead of bringing it up through here and, and caving everything in. But we're gonna get it up there. I promise you we're gonna do this by hand. So Jack, get to work. <laughs> This is why we never, ever, ever have to go to the gym, ever. The two of us carried that thing over. We each grabbed an end, we dropped it over, got it to here, got a good grip on it, slept it up to there, and then got it up on top of the liner, and we've since moved it a couple times. Just be careful when you're doing this, um, not to pinch the liner between rocks. I know these rocks are heavy. Anyways, I'm gonna set the camera down. We're gonna set this frame rock and get the rest of our waterfalls built, and then start working on retaining walls. But yes, that is the rock we want. We just have to make the bottom the top and the top the bottom, Jack. Looks like a pile of rocks right now, but there's only 10 of them so far. There will end up being probably three or four, maybe five more. But just like our biofalls hooking it up at the very end, we have now placed the spillway. A couple things I wanted to note up here is when setting the spillway is you wanna make sure it's level side to side and you can pitch it slightly forward, but you never wanna pitch it backwards, okay? So the reason we have it here is because it's going to be hidden behind this big frame rock and we're gonna create this almost this upper pool effect up here in this area. This is our spillstone, which dictates water level in this whole area and through here. We are going to completely bury and disguise this spillway up in here. Now, when attaching the liner to the spillway, you have to take out this collar nut and one of the rubber washers and that will go on the outside of the liner. Okay, so Jack is using his big man hands and taking the collar nut off the back side of the bulkhead. He will take off one of the rubber gaskets, as I said. Once he does that, he will set them off to the side. Now he's going to go ahead and lay that spillway back down where it is located. Now, he's going to tip this thing up vertically. It will create a ring on top of that liner to give him an idea of where to cut the hole in the liner to insert the bulkhead fitting through the liner so that we can attach the rubber gasket and the collar nut on the outside. I'm gonna put all my weight on it, down pressure, wiggle it around just a little bit, and bada bing, give yourself a nice little ring to go off of. Now, next step, grab yourself a knife, make sure it's got a sharp blade. I like to cut a little bit of an X in the center. And what that does is that gives me a piece or two 
to hold on to as I'm cutting this. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my knife, let the knife do the work. I never wanna make any 90 degree cuts. I'm gonna go on the outside of that ring on the liner. You can always take more off after the fact, so don't get overzealous. I'm gonna cut back towards me, which is not always the safest thing, but I can't see, because Jack is blocking my light. Actually, I think I'm blocking my light. Oh, yeah, see how the tables have turned? Yep. Okay. All right, so you can see I've started the hole. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. Let the knife do the work. Okay, now one rubber gasket goes on the inside. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push my spillway through over here. One thing that can happen is you can either undercut or overcut and see how I've already pulled the liner too tight to where I've actually pulled it off of the bulkhead fitting itself. You wanna make sure that if the hole's too small and you start getting that liner kind of belling or coming up over the threads, you wanna cut any excess off. But looks like I did a pretty good job based off of my stencil that I made myself. Now I'm gonna put my rubber gasket back on the outside this is that second one and then i will thread this collar nut once i get it started there we go and get the threads to seat remember this is a reverse thread fitting all of our bulkheads are regardless of whether they're two inch inch and a half one inch we don't sell those anymore hand tight for some of you out there it might be tighter than others i don't have any muscle i got it hand tight now i'm gonna grab my channel locks We'll go ahead, make sure that the spillway is secure and not moving around. And then I'm just gonna give it about a half a turn. You don't wanna over tighten this like I've said in videos before. Then you bring this back and this thing just sets right in here like so. Is that on an aqua basin? Yes, it is. Where'd you learn this one, Steven? Oh, got your glasses on yeah, this you know, time. Oh, a definitely yeah. a student. <laughs> yes. Still no ponytail holder. No. Yeah, you know, I still gotta, still gotta work on that. Yeah. I would say I, I love working with the, the, the moss rock. It's a lot different type of rock than the granite is. The granite's a lot more circular, I guess, and you know, this is this has a lot more uh, fine edges to it. So. Steven. Yes. Pond or pondless? What do I put? Oh, just pond or pondless. Pond. <laughs> Yes, that looks incredible. You know what my favorite part is? That little rock sticking up out of the water right there. I love that. I, and I really like the tighter waterfalls that come down. Awesome job with the moss. This is really cool. The way this boulder's cut in the grass, this is what we call destination boulders. So when you put rocks like this, everybody's invited to just come walk right up onto them. So cool. I would say my favorite thing about moss rock is that it's flat and it feels like you can move around it a whole lot easier than a round granite pond over there. I would agree. It, it's like you said, this is, they look like destination rocks. Even if they're you know two foot by two foot or something, you still want to go walk out if it's sitting nice and flat. I would say let's, like what's impressive about the pond, what's impressive about the fountainscape that we did you know a few days ago in the pond, this is really the very few stones it takes. This isn't a whole lot of rocks. These are slightly larger. These are all probably maxing your wheelbarrow. These are probably what I would would call two man rocks. One or two guys can pick them up, but you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven main rocks, and then a couple on the outskirts here. On what looks to be probably like a, I don't know, 20, 20 inch fall. It, it, yeah, really, really impressive. Hey guys, great job. Thank you. Woo -hoo. Should you clap? I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Greg's out of here. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell all your friends. Tell me what your favorite part is. How did the guys do? They've built three ponds or three projects in the last three days. Pretty impressive. Next time we're in here, we're ripping this whole thing apart and we're coming back to Academy. And then the week after that, we have Joey out of Canada coming in to build an epic creation in our sandbox studio. You guys can't miss that one. You have to see it because it's gonna be like something you've never ever seen us or any any of the other artists of the year do before. Make sure you guys stay tuned in. Don't forget to tell your friends. Bye.